Mr. Selden, what luck. Good luck? Yes. I'm on my way to the Gus Trenners at Bellamont, and I've missed the 3.15 to Rhinebeck. And there isn't another train till half past five. How nice of you to come to my rescue. And what form should my rescue take? Oh, almost any. Shall we go over to Sherry's for a cup of tea? Oh, I'm dying for a cup of tea. But isn't there a quieter place? I live near here. At the Benedict still? Yes, on the top floor. Is it cool up there? Come up and see. I'll take the risk. Oh, how delicious to have a place like this all to oneself. Even women have been known to enjoy the privileges of a flat. Governesses, yes, but not poor marriageable girls. I even knew a girl who once lived in a flat. Oh, if I could only do over my aunt's drawing room, I know I should be a better woman. Is it so very bad? That shows how seldom you come there. Why don't you come oftener? When I do come, it's not to look at Mrs. Peniston's furniture. Nonsense. You don't come at all. And yet we get on so well when we meet. Cream or lemon? Lemon. <laughs> oh, I can't make you out. <laughs> of course, there are men who dislike me and others who are afraid of me. They think I want to marry them. But I don't think that you dislike me. And you can't possibly think that I want to marry you. No, I absolve you from that. Well, then? Well, then, perhaps that's the reason. The reason for what? The fact that you don't want to marry me. Perhaps I don't regard that as such a strong inducement to go and see you. Dear Mr. Selden, it is stupid of you to be disingenuous. And it isn't like you to be stupid. I've been about too long. People are getting tired of me. They are beginning to say that I ought to marry. Isn't marriage your vocation? Isn't it what you're all brought up for? I suppose so. So why not take the plunge and have it over? 